Hey, what's up, guys? Today, I'll show you a zombie horror film, Dead Zone. Spoilers ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with the planet Earth having been hit by a virus that turns humans into ferocious beasts. Accidents and radiation poisoning have led to the mutation of humans in the so-called dead zones. In the first scenes, two armed survivors are trapped in one of these zones. They throw a smoke grenade inside a car to attract the attention of the infected. Suddenly, a large crowd of infected surround the car, and then a bomb is detonated to destroy them. The two survivors continue to roam the streets, looking for the infected, and at one point, they split up. After a while, one of them hears a scream of agony. The other survivor goes to check and finds the comrade decapitated. The survivor quickly looks around and then begins to run away. The scene ships to a military base, where we meet a group of soldiers who usually operate in dead zones to neutralize the infected. Soon after, their commander arrives to inform them of a new mission. In one of the dead zones, there is a laboratory with a prototype of the virus vaccine, and the commander tells the team that they must go there, get the vaccine, and then return to the base. The problem is that in the dead zone, there are still viciously infected people who have mutated. They are quieter, faster, and stronger than the normal infected. Next, the commander shows the team the new high-tech armor and weapons. After getting ready, the team boards the airplane, and one of the soldiers named Buddy informs them of safety precautions. He also warns them to always wear helmets, because they protect against radiation. Next, they jump from the airplane and land on the ground. Then they use a drone to scan the area and start walking to their destination. Soon after, they find the exploded car at the beginning of the film and realize that this happened a couple of days ago. At one point, the sniper spots an infected person who is having spasms. The sniper asks for permission to shoot, but the commander doesn't allow him to unless they are attacked. Later, they arrive at the laboratory where the vaccine is located. As they walk, they spot numerous bodies lying on the floor. When they open door, an infected person suddenly pounces on them and is quickly neutralized. They then arrive in the lab where the air is free of radiation, so they remove their helmets. Buddy takes the vaccine and states that they have six hours before the radiation destroys it. But there is a problem. They have no signal and cannot communicate with the base. Checking the drone, they observe several infected people running toward the lab. The captain of the team tells them to stay in line and prepare to eliminate the threats. Soon after, a wave of infected people arrives and the captain gives the order to shoot. The team begins to eliminate them, but soon more and more infected people arrive and surround the soldiers. They are forced to fight against the infected using their bare muscles, and as a result, the sniper is bitten by the zombie. At that moment, the survivor from the beginning of the film arrives to help them. After killing the vicious infected, the survivor takes care of the sniper's wound and signals the others to follow. Soon, they arrive at a shelter. When the survivor takes off the helmet, it is revealed to be a sexy woman. They lay the sniper down on a table and realize that he is badly wounded. In a panic, some of them suggest amputating his hand, but the survivor states that he will lose too much blood and die. The infection is spreading through the sniper's body, and in desperation, they decide to try the vaccine on him, although they are not sure if it will work. After they inject him with the vaccine, the sniper stops breathing and moving for a few moments, but then he recovers, and everyone breathes a sigh of relief. After proving that the vaccine works, they have to get it to the base at all costs. The team starts planning how to get to the evacuation point, and they realize they are running out of ammunition. If they have to fight another wave of infected people, they will run out of bullets and their chances of survival will drop dramatically. The sniper suggests taking the sexy survivor with them, but the captain disagrees as she is not part of the mission and she will attract more zombies with her good body smell. But the survivor states that she knows the area well and has been here for a month already. When they are convinced that they need her help to get to the base, the captain finally agrees to take her together. With five hours left to get to the evacuation zone, they begin the journey. They reach a checkpoint, and the sniper climbs a building to scan the area. He spots numerous infected people, but does not fire because it would only draw the attention of others. At one point, one of the soldiers has difficulty breathing, and they must find an area where the air is free of radiation. Soon after, they enter a building and arrive in an underground room, where the soldier with breathing difficulties takes off his helmet. While he recovers, the survivor and two team members go to check the area. At one point, an infected man pounces on the captain. He kills the infected with a knife right in the face. Meanwhile, the survivor and another soldier check the entrance to the building. The soldier notices movement outside. He checks further and realizes that the infected are attracted by a sinister thing. 
As the captain wanders down a corridor, he loses communication with the other team members and begins to feel dizzy. He falls to his knees and removes his helmet to breathe, but the air is contaminated with radiation, so he begins to cough. Meanwhile, Buddy keeps calling for the captain and tries to find him. Then the captain puts his helmet back on and Buddy finds him. The captain tells him that the helmet has malfunctioned. In the process, the soldier wanders outside and kills an infected with a straight shot to the head. The survivor is in the main hallway and hears a bizarre noise, but she remains motionless as ordered by the soldier. In the process, the soldier stands outside and an entity appears behind him. Buddy goes outside to look for a signal so he can contact the base, but he spots a group of infected. The captain orders him to go back inside and look for the others. The soldier outside informs the others that there is something sinister nearby. Just then, the entity stabs him in the back with a tentacle, causing him to bleed. Then the soldier falls to the ground, dropping his helmet, and the entity penetrates his skull with its tentacle. Soon after, the others arrive and make the survivor put on the dead soldier's helmet. They still don't know what happened to the soldier, but they only found his helmet, so they infer that he is now dead if he is not wearing it. The captain says to get over this, stating that they must bring the mission to an end and deliver the vaccine safely to the base. Suddenly, they hear a strange noise and decide to put their decoy into action. They detonate bombs in the distance to attract the infected to them, so they can continue on their way without having to fight them. The plan works, and the team goes outside. They find an electrical tower and decide to try again to contact the military base there. As the sniper and another team member try to contact the base, the others hear a bizarre noise nearby. Suddenly, there is interference that causes the sniper's helmet to malfunction, causing them to fall to the ground. Fortunately, the sniper made it in time to alert the base to their arrival at the evacuation point, so they can now continue on their way. At one point, the sniper turns around and sees the sinister entity that has captured his comrade. He starts firing at the entity, but is then pushed off the tower by it. Despite falling from such a height, the sniper is still breathing, but the others think he is seriously injured. In the process, the captain finds the entity's finger and decides to take it with them to study it once they arrive at the base. The sniper recovers and asks what happened to his missing comrade. The captain says they cannot abandon him until they confirm that he is dead, so he orders the others to go check the tower while he stays with the sniper. The survivor and Buddy climb up the tower, but don't find the missing soldier there. Meanwhile, the entity drags the dead soldier's body somewhere and shows that it has regenerative abilities. When the finger it lost grows instantly, the captain points out that they don't have time to search for the missing soldier as they must focus on their mission, which is to bring the vaccines to the base. So the survivor takes them to a garage to get her brother's car. She claims that they kept it there for extreme situations like this. After installing a new battery, the captain orders the survivor to drive as she knows the area better than they do. As she tries to start the car, the captain spots the entity on the ceiling. Then the entity falls on the car and destroys the battery, after which the team starts shooting at it. The entity quickly escapes into a corridor and the team decides to flee on their smelly foot. Unfortunately, when they open the door, they find numerous vicious infected people starting to run toward them. They quickly close the door, but another wave of infected people enters through the front door and the captain orders the team to split up in different directions. At one point, an infected man comes out of the darkness, and Tong massages the captain on the shoulder. The captain then throws him to the ground and kills him. Then an infected girl pounces on them, using her sexy zombie body, but she is quickly neutralized by the men without hormone mercy. The Shuming draws the other infected into the garage, putting the team in serious difficulty, because their ammunition is running low. In the process, the infection from the bite is about to kill the captain, but the survivor injects him with a vaccine. He then recovers, and with a hammer, he kills two infected people. The captain then says they must leave on foot, but the survivor doesn't want to follow them, because the entity could attack at any moment. The captain says they must stay together, but the survivor still chooses to stay in the garage. As the team pulls away, the survivor is stalked by an infected person from behind, who wants to make a zombie baby with her. She manages to knock him to the ground and smash him with her rifle. In the process, the team splits up to find the exit. The sniper finds an exit door, analyzes the situation outside, and informs the others. Just then, the entity traces his smell, approaches him from behind, and stabs him with its GPS tentacle, causing the sniper to fall to the ground, badly injured. Afterward, Buddy arrives and starts shooting at the entity. The entity lets out a scream that emits waves of electromagnetic radiation, knocking them down. After the entity escapes, Buddy and the captain find the sniper lying on the ground. He begs them to remove his helmet, but after that, he gives one last sigh and dies. 
The captain suspects that the entity is bloodthirsty, so they decide to install a bomb and use the sniper as bait to lure the entity and kill it. After a while, the entity doesn't show up, so Buddy and the captain decide to check the corridors. Suddenly, Buddy is approached by the entity. It flexes its monstrous muscles and begins to play with him, throwing him all over the place. The captain and the survivor find him injured, and Buddy tells them to give him the detonator and escape. The captain appreciates his courage and goes outside with the survivor. Soon after, the entity approaches Buddy and pulls out its long, juicy tongue, not to tongue massage him, but to stab its victim. Buddy uses the detonator, but nothing happens, and he ends up being killed by the long tongue entity. Then, the entity follows the captain and the survivor outside. It pounces on the captain and begins to feed on his blood, but it runs away suddenly, possibly because his blood smells diabetic. The survivor rescues the captain and takes him to a shelter. There, they begin to analyze the facts and realize that the entity doesn't like the blood of vaccinated people. They then decide to install new explosives and lure the entity into the bunker, hoping to inject it with the vaccine that will surely kill it. However, this time, they will use a timer instead of a detonator. As plan B, the captain gives the survivor the vaccine and says he will stay there to distract the entity while she escapes to the evacuation point. They start spilling blood on the floor, and at one point, the survivor sees the entity about to enter the bunker. The two hide, but the entity locates the survivor by her smell and grabs her sexy body with its juicy tongue. The captain begins to fire at the entity, drawing its attention. The entity then emits waves of electromagnetic radiation again, causing the captain to collapse. Shortly thereafter, he picks up his weapon and begins firing again, but the entity deflects the gun, causing it to hit the gas container, which begins to spread inside the room. The survivor tries to escape, but the entity grabs her and is about to suck her blood, but the captain attacks it with the knife. Then the captain uses the light to blind him and injects him with the vaccine. The entity falls to the ground and the vaccine begins to kill him. The captain and the survivor girl leave the bunker, after which the bomb explodes, killing the entity for good. In the final scenes, the two arrive at the evacuation point safely. Now scientists will use the captain's blood to create a new vaccine and save humanity. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.